the guy who wrote the book, Giants and Smalls, it's a book about me and him. I was going to Southern California, and he said, dude, how are you doing these miracles? Everywhere you go, these miracles show up. And I said, no, they're not miracles. They're states of being. And he says, hey, next time you're going to do one of these, tell me, tell me before it happens, and I want to kind of go along with you. I'm giving you this short version. I could take two hours to say this, but get, get the idea and stay with me. Because the next thing I say, well, you've got to have this base or you won't hear me. So I, I call up Nick Smith and I said, hey, I've got, a, I've got a long ride home. I have no idea what's going to go on between here and home. But it doesn't matter what goes on here between here and home. I'm going to be happy about it. Just like when we came on this trip, if we had been hijacked. Oh, gosh, I could say that too, but I wouldn't. The guy we met. Sorry, this is the mind. This is how this mind goes. So, so I said, Nick, I'm, I'm going to just have a great time. And uh, Boy, did I think that I know that like three miles later on the back of my sports car that doesn't have a spare tire, I don't have a back rear tire. So I'm out in the middle of the desert with my tire messed up on the side of the road. So I call Nick up. You know, some people would have that and they'd be wherever they're at. I'm going to create this distinction so you can see just like you go over and answer the door when you're in an argument, you can shift. You can do that with anything in the future. So I call Nick up and he, I said, Nick, we're going to do one of those miracles. He said, what's going on? I said, my car says, my tire slat, I got out. There's no tire. The kind of car I drive, they don't have them in there. They don't have these tires just sitting everywhere. So I'm going to have a tow truck or something. This is going to be fun. He says, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to have what I call the tow truck distinction. I made it up. And I said, no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay with it. Now, I haven't seen my wife for a week. I'm excited to get home. Now I'm on the side of the, in the desert. There's no place to go. I got to wait for a, a tow truck. And so I tell Nick, there's going to be a miracle. And I said, and Nick, you know the book that you wrote? Whoever is going to have to come and get me is going to get that book. And that person is going to go to my house. And I'm going to take a picture of that person with that book with my wife. That's before I even know who's picking me up. So I called my, the Porsche. And I said, hey, I'm out here with a flat tire. And I said, what do I do? And she says, blah, blah, blah. And she said, it'll be this long. And I said, now, picture her. She gets, probably gets people with flat tires out somewhere. They don't get their tire in time. They're going to like do whatever they do to get their tire in time. I said, so you, it's, they got to come from Indio. How long does that take? It'll probably be an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. I said, excellent. That is so good. I don't, she could have had a heart attack. I said, that is so good. Let me tell you what I've got to do. And I tell this lady what I got to do. And then I call Nick back up and I say, they're coming. He says, when is it? 70, 80 minutes. You're not pissed? I said, no, I told you this was going to be great. So I got that time. I make some phone calls. Do, 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 do. She calls back and said, boy, the kind of car you drive, you got to have a different thing on it because you can't put it on or take your scoop out. I said, so what's that mean? He says, it's going to be another 40 minutes. And I said, that is so good. <laughs> and I'm sure she's over there going, is this guy must be the guy who can't remember somebody's last name or what the name of his book is. <laughs> and 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 I said, yeah, that's great. So I did some more stuff. And then she called back to tell me it was going to go on. And so I said to her, hey, do you know who's going to pick me up? And she said, most people don't ask who the tow truck driver is. I said, yeah, I want to know. She says, why? I said, why don't you get a message to him? She said, well, let's see him. His name's Mike. I said, good. Would you please tell Mike? Now picture this gal takes these phone calls. Nobody's doing this stuff. And nobody's going to get the result I got, but anybody could. This isn't special to me. So if you're thinking that, disappear that. You could do what I'm talking about today out there in the foyer or anywhere. And so she says, yeah, his name's Mike. I said, here's what I want you to tell Mike. I don't know who Mike is. Mike's going to show up. Like, I don't know who some of you are. And when I saw you, you know what? I love you. This is cool. Let's go. So that's a tow truck driver in this. This is going to be great no matter how this goes. So I said, get this message to Mike. Tell Mike he's going to pick up a guy. He's going to have more fun with this guy than he's ever had, and I have a gift for him. And she says, you want me to tell the tow truck driver that? I said, yeah, T tell Mike that. So I'm wait. Mike pulls up. Mike's Native American, uh, probably about 26 years old, pretty good-sized guy. And the first thing I do is I say, Mike, I am so glad to see you. Man, you know how to operate that thing. I wouldn't know how to get that on that in a million years. 
thank you. Hey, do you mind if I take a picture across the street? Because I'm going to document all this. Because you and I are going to have this unbelievable experience. And that dude is looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? Well, who's that dude? That's wild. So he's loading up my car. I get in the, the truck with him. I'm giving you the short version. I get in the truck. with. I'm serious. I get in the front with him. And I pull in and it's like, he looks at me like that. He turns the radio on. It's, it's uh, heavy metal. And I think it's like, that dude ain't talking to me. We got two hours together. So I got this dude in here, a Native American. This Probably this guy looks like the grandfather to him. And, and I say, hey, Mike, what are you listening to? He looks at me like I'm crazy. He says, it's heavy metal. I said, who's playing? We start talking about who's playing. We're just having a conversation. I say, who do you think started heavy metal, Mike? He said, oh, I think it's Ozzy Osbourne. I said, oh, Mike, in 1972, I went to a concert, and I saw Ozzy Osbourne. I love the way he pounds it. I love the way the drummer goes and the way he sings. And he said, now we're in this conversation about heavy metal. I asked him, what's, what's your favorite heavy metal group? You know, I don't know much about heavy metal. Now I do. Everybody's my coach. Everybody teaches me. He tells me about what's going on. I'm listening to him. It's like crazy good. And, uh, you know, and I then just tell him what I'm doing in California, what's going on. I tell him about the book. I give him a copy of the book while we're driving. Now, Nick, the guy who wanted to know about the miracle head, he says, keep me up to date on the miracle. I said, dude, when you're doing miracles, you can't stop and advertise them out. They just flow. So if you want to know about the miracle, you call me. So I'm in the middle of this heavy metal discussion with Mike, my buddy. Who's, I know that his brother died, and we connected on that. And it's like, this is a real guy. He cares, and we're going over heavy metal. Nick calls. So I just take my phone, put it on, and you hear, you go the deepest, hardest Metallica there is. It's playing, and it's so loud. And I say, Nick, I told you we're going to have a great time. He says, what in the hell is going on? I said, Nick, let me introduce you to Mike. Mike, this is Nick. He wrote that book I gave you. And we go back and forth like that for two hours. He's supposed to drop me off at a Porsche dealership. We are such good friends. I said, you got to go right by my house. Can we pull in there and load my car? Not the car itself, the stuff that was in it. I'm on a trip. He pulls in there, and I know it's like he's supposed to go there, drop the guy off, and go back. We're there. I take him in. Get Amy. We take a picture. <laughs> When, I'm, when I had that extra time in the car, I'm calling my, the guy's a friend of mine, you know, the Porsche dealer, I won't get a tire. He says, drop your car off there, I'll have it fixed. So now I'm going to get Mike to drive somewhere different in my town, not the Porsche dealership, and drop the car off. And he's going to let me video it while he does it. Then the car's off, and he's going to take me back to my house. That's what I call the tow truck distinction. That trip was going to be good no matter what happened. I decided that ahead of time. And get this, you're doing that too, either that way or that way. You already decided you're going to be pissed off at him. You're playing it out in your mind. But only always. You are pre-playing everything you do. I suggest you do some tow truck driver distinctions. I suggest you call it what it's going to be before it happens and then have practice at being able to deal with that when it happens, no matter what that is. Now, that gives you a little background. Does everybody kind of get that? That could be a really not a good experience, and somebody could take the three weeks saying that was a horrible thing, blah, 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 and I'm taking this guy home, meeting my wife. I got a best friend. By the way, this is all posted on Facebook. I mean, I just, the tip of the iceberg, but you see this guy in my home page, it's weird. He's got, why's he got that picture of that guy? Because I love that guy. Because he's alive. Because he's human. Because he's divine. Because I'm committed to have a uh, tow truck distinction with the guy. Well, I do the equivalent of tow truck distinctions with lots of stuff. I don't have any more talent than you. You are doing the same thing. It's just what are you doing it with? I'm glad she's not here. She wouldn't see this as positive. So I raised my voice. She thinks, mm, I'm getting a little off. Glad, glad she went to Tinkle or whatever. <clears throat> She's not in the room, is she? <laughs> so tow truck driver distinction as a possibility is deciding how something's going to be before the thing happens. See, I'm, listen to what I said. Slow it, wait. Deciding who you're going to be 
is a state of being. It's not a state of doing. I don't have to figure out how, what am I going to do with this guy when he gets here because who I'm being. If I plant blueberries, what am I going to get? Well, if I'm there, like this is going to be a great, exciting thing. What kind of doing am I going to Great, exciting doing. That's like you win. Hey, if I can do it, anybody can. It's simple. I, I You've seen I can, some, you know. She jokes, I can multitask. So I'm telling you, whoever's over there going, oh, yeah, he can do that. You're already doing it. You practice it every day. 